to welcome you back here to the Rogue Iron Game desk. Sam Farber, Dr. Bill Crawford, and Bill, a, a big, big move there made by Hathor Bjornsson. We expected him to win that event, but to do it by that much, that easily, that is significant for the overall competition. Save some energy. We're going into a high-energy event, which is the frame carry, and sets him up very well to finish out. Like he said, it's this is his event to lose at this point. And honestly gives him some, some breathing room. It gives him room to make a mistake that he honestly did not have coming at the end of day one, and now he has created it there. Also bypasses the rogue record breakers. We love to see those. They're, they're big effort events, but we still get to see some more coming up here. Uh, the rogue record breaker will continue with the anvil lift. That's a great lift. It's an old time strongman lift. Blacksmiths used to turn the anvils up and grab the horn, which is the pointy part of the of the anvil, and try to pick it up off the ground. So we've got a special apparatus. It'll be like a powerlifting meet. They go in ascending order. Men and women are going to compete. It's a great lift. A, a famous old time strongman named George Jowett really made this a popular thing to try to do as well. And people got back into it. So they've been making special implements just for this lift. And what are some of the keys to this lift as opposed to some of the other road record breakers we've seen? Grip strength is something that's a little bit elusive. You either have it or you don't. You can put a couple of pounds on the bar and you just cannot lift it. So the key here is to get good first attempts and your grip only lasts so long and really pace yourself in that you get two, three good attempts. The other thing about grip strength is that you have to really focus on pushing down on the implement with your fingertips and make sure that your wrist is in a good spot to finish the lift. So I would say those are the two pieces that I would look for most. We'll be getting the competition floor ready for this next Rogue Record Breaker men's and women's anvil grip. And of course, we've got uh, much, much more to come still in our Arnold Strongman Classic competition. Uh, the home run derby is the deadlift. But these next two events, particularly the frame carry, we thought that was going to be the separator. That, that was going to be the one that really determined because it, it was maybe more of a neutral event in that no one had a huge advantage like, say, Half Thor does in the deadlift. Yes, and you can make a mistake a lot more easily with the frame carry. In other words, I was, as I was telling you earlier, I talked to Zadrunas Saviskas, who capitalized on a couple of athletes making mistakes in the frame in the past, that the frame, the front of the frame, because it's on a ramp, can touch the, can touch the ramp itself, the frame wheel, and send you off balance. Plus, there's a grip issue. Every time you have to stop and restart and pick that thing back up, it just, it just feels like it got 50 pounds heavier every time you do that. So. There is room to make a mistake. We even saw, you know, those those momentary bobbles have a big impact earlier in the competition. Trial by stone, you know, just those little imperfections, not ha handling them perfectly, cost guys a lot of points. Yes, it does. And so, I was a little surprised by some of the some of the maximum uh, weights that we got out of these guys. But again, this is six events this year. It's deep into the competition. It's not the first event. So I think. You know, logically, that's why we didn't see the, a bunch of 1,000-pound lifts. It's on the second day, and there's, there are six events. That's probably how that happened. And again, the, the order matters. If you put it first, they've got the most energy. They can go the biggest. If you put it last, they know they don't have anything left to do. That's true. So someone like Hathor can go out there and, and try and make that move. Nonetheless, it was very impressive. Anytime someone lifts over 1,000 pounds, that is significant, and it happens today for Half Thor Bjornsson. We are getting ready again for this rogue record breaker, the Anvil Lift, and we've got our women's start list uh, just coming into us now, uh, and we'll uh, be able to share that with you as well. So looking at this implement, it's a beautiful stainless steel implement, and they will hook it up to the bar and keep putting weight on that, that post. Some familiar names that we've already seen in uh, the various road record breakers uh, already. Uh, Safel Moore in particular stand out, but we'll also have some men be attempting a road record breaker here. Not the same $100,000 plus dollar prize attached to this one as was with the deadlift, but it should be, right? Well, some interesting <laughs> points here. I do know the grip strength of uh, some of the women. Uh, Adrienne Wilson's one of the athletes. Uh, she's a great Highland Games athlete, world champion in the past, but she's also the first woman to close the number two gripper. She's got a strong pair of hands. She's an, she's an Olympic level shot putter. And then you saw the men's list. You've got oh, brothers. brothers there. There's brothers there. And there's credibility inside of this. So 
And That'll two, be very interesting. Those two brothers have both competed, but they haven't competed in the same event yet. Yes. So this will be interesting to see how that sibling rivalry plays into it. Also some some uh, Hall of Fame, if you will, names in that event as well beyond the Stoltmans. So yes, should be very entertaining. And of course, we've got two more full events left in our Arnold Strongman Classic. And uh, even though Hathor Bjornsson has created that breathing room, this is by no means over. Martins Litsis, he is certainly within striking distance if he puts together two great events, and he's capable of doing so. Absolutely, and, and again, he's great at strength endurance events. He's got those really big hands and has there's no straps allowed on the frame carry, so he can actually not have a drop and have a great event and maybe even an event, event win or a top two or three placement Closing that gap again with Mateusz. And then Mateusz Kieliskowski is the only man who is really within striking distance at this point. But we'll save that for a moment. Let's go back to the anvil lift. What are the keys in terms of you know, how you handle this apparatus? Well, you want to, it's, it's a little bit odd because the way it sits in your hand. It's not, you don't close your hand completely on it and it's upside down. So you really have to push your thumb down and your forefinger. So the, the, the smaller fingers, the fourth and fifth digits don't have so much to play and you really want to squeeze on that. It's kind of an odd event, but I love seeing the homage to the old time strongman. I really do. George Jowett's famous lift with an anvil is, you know, seared in a lot of people's memories and this is where we are. And look at this. They've got a beautiful new implement that's made just for this. You can train. You don't have to have 15 anvils. You just need to buy that one implement and a post and a, and a carabiner and you can hook yourself up to get really good at lifting this type of uh, event, an anvil. That's what's coming up. Men's and women's anvil grip, our latest rogue record breaker. It's uh, just moments away as we continue here in Columbus, Ohio, home of the 2020 Arnold Strongman Classic. Been a very busy uh, second day of competition and um, looking forward to seeing these men and women get back out there on the floor. The anvil grip lift is going to be next. We're going to take a quick breather and come back with much, much more. Arnold Strongman Classic continues from Columbus, Ohio after this. The Rogue Iron Game from the 2020 Arnold Strongman Classic is brought to you by GORUCK. Founded by a Green Beret, GORUCK is an American brand with special forces roots. Theragun, change the way you move. Yeti, built for the wild. Rogue, don't weaken. And the Arnold Sports Festival. Here inside the Greater Columbus Convention Center, anxiously awaiting with anticipation for the anvil grip lift. It should be just moments away. Sam Farber, Dr. Bill Crawford back here with you at our Rogue Iron Game desk. And still getting the competition floor ready for our competitors. We have seen the list. There's seven women six men, including Mark Felix, who will be out there. We talked about the Stoltman brothers. Talk about Mark Felix's illustrious strongman career and uh, what you expect from him in this well, road record break. Last night at dinner, we were talking about the guy's hands you shake here, and, and the name that came up most consistently was Mark Felix. He's a grip specialist in many, many ways. He actually won the Denny Stone lift yesterday and set a record, so you know that he's got a great grip, and he specializes in those things. I think what you're really seeing is something where people can 
by these implements and become a specialist in it. Grip itself has turned into a sport. They call it arm lifting in Russia. So this is a way to, I, I would encourage people to get these implements that it helps your strength overall for stone lifting and other sports. If you're, if you're a firefighter or, a, or work in, uh, in uh, law enforcement, a good grip is important. So these are things that, that, that everyone can get involved with. Take one of these things to your office and challenge the people that you're around every day <laughs> and see how they do. You might notice the athletes walking behind us, heading out to the competition floor. One more on Mark Felix. I mean, he's a, an older gentleman for the, the competition field we've seen here, but you keep referencing that the old man strength that you're waiting for some of these guys to develop. How does it help him continue to best what are his own previous world records? Well, uh, you, you talk about, you know, uh, mature strength, I'll call it. Uh, he's You he's said old man before, so I'm repeating you. I don't want to get in trouble. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, but he does have a great set of hands, and I expect him to do a lot on this one. Um, he probably to win, but some of the younger athletes obviously are very, very strong as well. I think the key for him is he's got a lot of experience with grip, and he'll know how to pace himself on this. Women will go first. In this rogue record breaker, I keep peeking behind me because they've got the uh, competitors congregating out there and getting ready to go. Uh, afterwards, and after a brief break, we'll be having event five in the Arnold Strongman Classic, the frame carry, and we've talked about that and the, the variety of ways it can impact things. Uh, Hafthor Bjornsson has earned the lead he has achieved and maybe gotten uh, a, a little bit of a benefit of some less then stellar performances from some of his chief competitors. You know, some of those weight choices uh, might become a factor later on, but he, he's got that edge. It's certainly one that can disappear quickly, though in the frame carry, depending on how uh, things bounce or how things go on your way up the ramp. Absolutely, and the best part about this, they're going to have two ramps and they're going to face each other, so it's mono a mono. So he actually gets to face Matthews, and they're going to come up that ramp and see each other and I don't know if they're going to be looking in each other's eyes, but they'll know they're in front of them, and they, it'll actually maybe make them push a little bit. Sometimes when you push on a, on a race like this or, a, or a, an event like this, you could potentially make a mistake. And that race element wasn't there in you know, the, the similar event maybe is, is Wheel of Pain where you could see where everyone else had gone before you, but you didn't maybe have as much of a, of a gauge on the pace as the race was going on. And here, that's going to be the case, maybe a, a benefit or a hindrance, and also Martins Litsis, he's someone who is capable of posting a very good time, capable of making up a lot of ground, but probably won't be in that head-to-head -head matchup. No, not in that, that particular uh, uh, way, but you, you want your fastest time regardless. And the biggest piece of this is that you want to not make a mistake, but get that fast time so in some ways that's taken away I think it'd be more distracting to me if the other athlete dropped it or struggled I'm not sure I would actually go wow uh, you know I've, I've got him now I'm still thinking okay it's push to get my time yes but, but it's instinctual to go the other way like okay I'm, I'm I'm in a race against a person not always against the clock and so well at least that you would think would be the instincts that would come into play the other person has a, a misstep and you relax. Yes, and you also would, you might think, wow, I didn't expect that to happen to this guy because he's really strong, but sure. you want to be able to just focus on your event and get your time. It's sounding like we are ready to go here on our latest Rogue record breaker, the Anvil Grip Lift. Adrian Wilson is slated to go first, but we've seen some changes at times during uh, the record breakers as athletes get out there on the floor. Get a better idea. So here we go. We're gonna check out. And already looks like we're going to be starting with the men. What do we, what do we have starting out here? So, Bill, take us through what we're seeing as these guys and women step up here for this event. And here's Matt Eisman explaining the event, so let's listen in to him. Well, me and Matt need to sync up a little bit better here, so we'll work on that for the future. <laughs> uh, 
Just waiting for the start of the Anvil Grip Lift. Athletes are walking out here. You, you talked before about you know, the, the unique nature of this particular lift, the history of it. And we're getting some weights here. Tom Stoltman's going to attempt 190 pounds. I think he's already attempted it, and he said and he's out. So there you go. Sorry, I think that Mike Saffel and Sarah Saffel. Mike at 190. Sarah. I've done some of this. This is a really high starting weight. This is fantastic. These guys are really, really hitting this. That's a lot of chalk on that for this, this slick implement, but I assume he's done it. Gets a down signal from the head referee. And that's not Carl Gillingham. That's actually his brother, Brad, who is a IPF world champion in the deadlift and a great gripper. He never, he did overhand deadlifts. So Successful easy. Successful lift for Sarah as well. Very good. What are your expectations in terms of how much weight these men and women are going to be able to pull? I expect the men to go close to 220. That's probably going to be the mark that, that you're going to see to, to be a winning lift. Okay, so we talked about old man strength. So the younger Stoltman didn't do that great. And the older one's going to go out and see how he does. If he pulls this off pretty quickly, this is his older brother, Luke. So... He's about 10 years older than his brother, so if he pulls this up, then our theory lives, especially with the grip. I don't know if he's ever done this before. Wow. <laughs> so world-class strongman, two guys that were in the finals of World's Strongest Man. Sorry. So continue what we were saying there. Good lift for her. And so then you have basically people who can come in and do this event after trying out online and already the first two athletes out are world-class strongmen. I mean, like top, top strongmen. Tom Stoltman lifted a 600-pound Atlas stone yesterday, <laughs> and he's already out. He's got grip strength. <laughs> it shows you it's a specialized field. So Danielle Llewellyn will go next for the women at 120 pounds. Looks like they're briskly here. checking the anvil here. Or they're ch changing the weight, sorry. So Danielle Llewellyn will be next. Looks like they're changing the weight there too. Yes. Moving up, just like uh, it's just like a powerlifting mate. You move up. I believe they give you three attempts. Highest weight wins. Luke Raymond at 200 pounds over there in that hand over the men. And on the women's side, Danielle Llewellyn. Danielle Llewellyn at 120. Good to see women competing in, in grip strength. lift you can't drag it up your leg that gives you an advantage so the Gillingham brothers are the are the are the judges for this and they're actually grip specialists they've got a brother Wade who was a terrific grip specialist and was known for that but they've all got great grips as world-class strongmen and as I said Brad was a IPF world lift powerlifting champion here's Mark Felix he set a record in the Denny Stone <laughs> That was, uh, there you go, just a really easy lift. I think he just wanted to take an attempt and see what it felt like. But Brad Gillingham actually did overhand deadlifts and had something like 80, 800 pound deadlifts in IPF competition and overhand it all. So he's got a pretty good grip. Competition continues here. Our room record breaker, the Anvil Grip Lift. Men and women competing simultaneously here, trying to get the weights as they're announced. So brutal and 
Easy lift. It looked like she slid a little bit to start with, but had to bite down a little bit more. Good lift. Grips its own strength. And it's a it's really a strongman component as well. We talked about the components of strongman, strength endurance, static events like deadlift and press. Also a lot of a lot of grip strength as well. And you think about, you know, there's not a specific grip strength uh, event like we've had in the past, maybe like a Hercules hold, that kind of thing, or a car hold, or a hold for time in some way. But when you start talking about frame carries without straps, that's grip. Stone lifting, you have to have really strong hands on those events. This is Sarah Chapelau on the left. There we go, 150 pounds. Wow. 150, I believe, was the announced weight. <laughs> she just she got that really well. And that last athlete on the men's side, he lifted very easily as well. I remember once I was at a competition and somebody rolled out an inch dumbbell and a plumber came out of the crowd and lifted it with both hands like it was nothing. So there's some some people who work with their hands who have extremely strong hands. Well, you were saying yesterday that the uh, the person who's maybe really is the world's strongest man or capable of being the next world's strongest man doesn't know it yet. Correct. And uh, we we scour the world looking for people who can be in that class, but they're not always able to be found or have the opportunity to train. And the hope is that now with the events like this and the media surrounding it, that it'll be a little easier for them to find you rather than you have to go find them. Yes, the world's a little smaller because of social media and the internet. Sarah Safel is going to be coming up, and it looks like with Mike as well. What's the best you've posted on this? Uh, I've, I've got one of these. There, uh, I've got one of these. It's not exactly the same implement. Uh, over 200 pounds. I'll just leave it with that. Just like the Rolling Thunder, going over 200 pounds. I thought it was an important thing to just really focus on my grip. Did a lot of one-handed barbell lifting as well, deadlifting. Sarah Saffel, 115. Looks like Mark Felix will be coming back for another go. He looked very easy on his first one. Yes. I just expect Mark to sort of gauge it and sort of try to throw a knockout punch and just <laughs> finish everything up. Adrian Wilson's also going to be making an attempt at 115 on the women's side. So one thing that uh, George Jowett talked a lot about, uh, he was the anvil lifter we talked about, who was really about 100 years ago, mostly known as a strength author and a coach, but he always talked about the size of your wrist because your supporting muscles for your grip come from your forearm. So look at the wrist size of these folks as well, not just their hand size. There's Mark Felix. Still has not been challenged whatsoever. Just lifted 215 pounds. Good lift from her, too. Well, I told you it was going to be at least up to around, you know, 225 pounds to to be in the top or win. So he just he just threw a big punch out there saying, OK, we're at 215 now. And that was easy. <laughs> Bill Danielle Llewellyn will be next. on the right side. Very good. Very good lift. See what she can do. For people who maybe don't have this available to them at home, what, what is it like trying to grip that anvil horn there? It wants to slide out of your hands. That's obvious. So you have to really bite your hand down. You don't want too much chalk, but it you, and it really is a lot of intense pressure on your thumb because that's, that's what you can do with it. 
Eric Dawson now going to make an attempt at 220 pounds. Looking easy. Yes. I like his I like his uh, his chances in this event also. This will be Jen Tibbenham making attempt at 135 pounds. Playing a little bit of chalk. Wow, good lift. That was right up there for her. So grip is a sport, and she's taking it really seriously here. Notice a lot of different overall body types on both the men's and the women's side of thing. Just grip is a different a different test. Yes, it is. Uh, there was a, the famous number four gripper. The first guy to close that was a guy named Joe Kenny, and he was not the biggest man. He, he trained really, really hard and, and made his hands very, very strong. So you can have athletes that grip's not necessarily their forte. I'm surprised there aren't some Icelanders out here because they they tend to have very strong grips as well. Mike Safel is going to be coming up next, and also Kristen Bonito. Kristen. Can't quite stand up, slides out. Too much chalk. 200 for Mike Safel on his side. Kristen, give it another attempt. Oh, got the thumbs up before she put it down, so wow. just beat it. Okay. No lift because it slipped out even after the after you have to be able to put the implement down. Just like a deadlift, they don't allow you to just you can't drop the weight. That's why the mechanical failure on the strap, he did not he not only did not complete the lift, he couldn't put it down in a controlled manner. Mark Felix is going to attempt 230, and Sarah Chapelau is going to attempt. You can see the size of Mark's hands. I've shaken just about everybody's hands, and he's in the top five of the most impressive hands I've ever shaken. Chapelau is going to attempt 165 pounds, and again, Mark Felix going for 230. He did have that Denny Stone lift yesterday, so that might have taken a little bit out of him. I'm a little surprised he's not just picking this right up. But again, it just takes a couple of pounds on these grip events, like the Rolling Thunder, five pounds, two pounds. It, it goes from being a liftable object to being, you can't even break it off the ground. You were talking about the chalk. Did you see a good lift here? But you're, you're talking about how much chalk would I mean, obviously these lifters are using it for grip on a lot of different things. But when it comes to the anvil, what is that line between not enough and too much? People put too much on when they do grip events. Uh, and that's that's the truth. Uh, any kind of uh, uh, the chalk actually just takes a little moisture off of your hand and something like this where it's going to slide. It actually acts. It works against you. So having a little bit of that that natural moisture on your hand is actually a better a better uh, grip. Sarah Safel is going to go at 125 over on the women's side. You see a good lift on the thumbs men's up. side. Yeah, thumbs up. Was that 230? And here it is, a you know man who's obviously not as large as Mark. Eric Dawson will be next for the men. He's going to attempt 240 pounds. So our rogue record breaker, the men's and women's anvil grip lift. Grip is also just fun. I wish Brian was here because uh, Brian Shaw, because he's a he's done a lot of fantastic grip stuff and he's he's very good at these kind of things. I think he would love to watch this and be or be a part of it. I'm sure he's watching from home. Wow. 
Good easy lift for that Eric Dawson. I think that was his, was that his second or third lift? And I think that's it. If, he, if we're doing a powerlifting type of uh, format, he gets three lifts. Here's Sarah Safel at 125. Just that little bit of extra weight. She knows that's going to require a little more chalk. Highly burnished stainless steel, so it's actually pretty slick. I've I've seen these. They'll they'll betray you. Sarah Safel making in another attempt. 125, and again, does it slip out? Good effort. We have an official result for the men. Eric Dawson is your winner at 240 pounds. He made that look pretty easy. He did. He had a lot of gas in the tank. I think he could go on 250 or 260. Adrian Wilson's up for the females. She's going to go at 130. Beautiful road plates stacked up. She competed in the professional island games yesterday. Wow. Very good. Now the technical point that she she showed she exhibited that very well. <laughs> what an athlete, Olympic shot putter. So notice how she turned her wrist forward towards her thumb, and that makes the that makes the point actually go against the top of your hand, the, the uh, towards the smaller finger. So that's a technical point that maybe some of them don't get. She really turned her wrist hard. Danielle Llewellyn will step up next. She's going to attempt 145 pounds. Men's competition already decided. Eric Dawson, your winner. Danielle Llewellyn, 145. She's trying to throw the knockout punch here. Just not coming up. So again, see how uh, Adrian actually turned her wrist towards her thumb, and that helped a little bit. She's she's done a lot of grip work. Jen Tibbenham will now try and throw that knockout punch at 145. Get the crowd Psyched engaged. Up for it. Yeah. Here we go. Second up. Switch hands. Come on, get it up. Pull, pull, pull. Oh, not quite. She didn't stand up. Tibbenham, not going to happen. Not happening. <laughs> but that's her, that's her version. Stuck the dismount. <laughs> not quite a cartwheel. So notice Adrian is spurring the other athletes on. Come on. One seventy. Wow. This is Kristen Benito, 165 pounds. I thought the previous one was the knockout punch. This is a haymaker. Kristen Benito at 170. 170. They're announcing 170 now on the floor. Wow. And this would be to take the lead. Keep in mind, a thousand dollars on the line. The woman who sets the record here, Sarah Chapla, currently in there. Benito, 170. Got it to move a little bit. Lock in, lock in, stand up. Oh, got it off the ground. For more chalk, she's not done. Probably change hands too. 
watch your grip goes. Sticking with it. No, no. She dragged it against her leg a little bit. I don't know if that was the call or she just didn't hold it and then and put it back down. She didn't get the put down. She didn't get the put down signal. Great effort though. So she's got the record. She can improve upon it. Sarah Shaflow. No. So she's already got the record looking to make it higher here, Magnus. 170 pounds. 170, wow. Very quiet and unassuming, and Sarah she, does with this. Sarah Chapelow already has the record. Now we'll try and move forward to 170. Yeah! Wow! Great lift. I mean, the men started at what 190. That's the record for the women. Well done. That's probably your training partner. Looks like slash husband. <laughs> Very entertaining and a lot of good grips out there on the competition floor for that rogue record breaker. Reminder, we've got men's event five coming up, the frame carry. That is in the on-deck circle here in Columbus, Ohio at the 2020 Arnold Strongman Classic.